So I'll just repeat that we're this is four sessions and this is the first one of discovering a life of prayer and tonight we're learning how to pray. Each session will be about an hour. It will include some discussion, some video, and some prayer time. Okay, so fill in the blank. I'll <laughs> fill it in too. For me, prayer is, and it could be an adjective, or it could be an action. It could be an emotion. But what's the first thing that springs to mind when you hear, for me, prayer is? Personal. <laughs> okay. That was the first thing that came to mind. Okay. Great. Yeah. Um, for me, prayer is grounding. Hmm. Um, but I'll be the first to admit that I don't do it as much as I want to. I don't think <laughs> any of us do. <laughs> All right. We've got we've got some others here. The person who taught me to pray is or was? My mom. Your mom. Yeah. We always mm -hmm. did our prayers before we went to sleep at night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have a, a very vivid memory still of being very young, um, maybe three or four. And um, there was still a crib in my room. I had a pretty big room in the house that we first lived in and I was playing in the crib while my mother I think was changing the sheets on another bed in the room and she taught me the Lord's Prayer and I remember that really vividly um, I could also remember going to church and hearing my grandmother sing the doxology and thinking mm -hmm. she doesn't sing this must be important <laughs> Oh. Yeah, because she didn't sing. So. Yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> let's see. Another fill in the blank. Sometimes I wish that my prayer life was or could be more consistent. <laughs> <laughs> you and me both. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I God forgive me. I, I wake up every morning and my first thought is, should be, oh, what a beautiful day. Another gift from God. I should be praying. And it's not. My first thought is coffee. <laughs> my, then I'm usually right there with you. Yeah. Maybe right after the bathroom, but yeah. <laughs> when people ask if you'll pray for them, you feel what? Honored. Honored. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, they yeah. must they must have a need. So, you know, they, they ask me to do that for them. I... Yeah, yeah. It, it's interesting. Sometimes I think people ask me to pray for them because they feel they don't know how to or they don't oh. know what to pray. And um, I always encourage them, you know, prayer is simply, it doesn't even need words. It can just be an intention in your heart. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of the time when I pray for someplace, someone, I don't pray for them, you know, for a specific thing. I simply lift them up and say, God, you know what this person needs. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, tonight's printer, presenter is a woman named Rhonda Lee. She's a priest in the church. She's a writer. She's a spiritual director. And she's currently, I can't speak tonight, down in Durham, North Carolina, as the rector of St. Luke's Episcopal Church. Uh, she's written a number of books. Her most recent one is called Seek and You Will Find Discovering a Practice of Prayer. So I'm going to um, pause this share. And pause the share. Yep. And I'm going to get the video queued up here. Okay, and now I will um, just share. Nope, not that one. <laughs> Someday I'll learn this technology. I swear I will. Until they, you know, upgrade it and change everything. So <laughs> there, 
there's that for sure. Yes. Okay. Now I'm going to share this screen. All right. Here we go. Now, um, and I want to share the sound and optimize the video. Okay. All right. So I hope you'll you'll let me know, will you, with uh, if you can hear this okay? Looks good so far. All right, let's hit play. Can you hear that? Yep. How should I pray? What happens when I pray? What is prayer anyway? I have received these questions more times than I can count. People ask them in embarrassed or exasperated voices. Embarrassed when they think that as a Christian, they're supposed to know how to pray without being taught. Exasperated when they know they need to be taught and they can't find anyone to teach them. I understand why people can feel exasperated and there's no need to be embarrassed. You and I all need teachers to help us pray, and anyone can learn. Prayer is simply this, time passed consciously in the presence of God. During that time, we may speak our own words, or we may speak words that have been handed down through the tradition, even from Jesus himself. We may be silent, we may sit still, or we may move. The most important thing in prayer is our intention to devote this time to deepening our relationship with God who loves us is always reaching out to us and fervently desires our company. How do we know God wants our company. The Bible testifies that God has always desired it. That's true, even though human beings tend to disobey God and follow our own foolish or selfish desires. A story from the third chapter of the book of Genesis illustrates what I mean. The story may be familiar to you. After Adam and Eve eat the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they realize they're naked and they fashion fig leaf loincloths for themselves. But even after they've covered up, the sound of God, their creator, walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze sends them into hiding. Instead of just strolling on by, God seeks them out. God calls, where are you? The conversation with God that follows shows the human beings that even when shame drives them to slink behind the nearest tree, God will keep reaching out to them. The all-knowing, all-seeing God who brought them into being and sustains their every breath, asks questions like, where are you? Who told you that you were naked? And what is this that you have done? Even though God presumably already knows the answers to these queries, God still asks them for the pleasure of conversing with these beloved creatures. As the French medieval rabbi Rashi wrote, God asked this in order to enter into language with the first people. And by talking with their creator about their actions, the human beings learn to understand themselves better. Adam and Eve's conversation with God who asks, where are you, is humanity's first prayer. Remember, Adam and Eve didn't start that conversation. When God calls out to them, they're hiding in the bushes, embarrassed and afraid. Can you identify with these ancestors in their shame? I can. There have been plenty of times when I didn't want to tell God what was on my mind, when I wanted to cover up or deny the things I had done wrong, or when I was too embarrassed or afraid to admit what I really wanted for fear it wouldn't happen. But the bedrock assumption of Christian prayer is that we have nothing to fear by standing naked before God. This truth has been affirmed by scripture and tradition since long before the founding of the church. When you and I cry out to God, we are responding to the one who has already reached out to us in love. 
You might wonder, besides getting to know God and oneself better, what else happens during prayer? Among many Christians who have answered that question is St. Thomas Aquinas. Back in the 13th century, Thomas listed three benefits of prayer. First, prayer itself is a good thing for Christians to do. Second, when we pray, we ask God to give us the good things God indeed wants to provide. And third, prayer can refresh us, lighten our load. As you and I ask God for the good things God wants to provide, we may become aware of the ways in which we can align ourselves with God by sharing what we have with our neighbors. In Aquinas's words, our actions can themselves be a form of prayer. He said, as long as a person is acting in their heart, speech, or work in such a manner that they are tending toward God, they are praying. And thus, one who's, who is directing their whole life toward God is praying always. When we pray, we become channels of God's power to release love and healing into the world. And when we're not sure how to pray or what to pray for, it's worth remembering the Apostle Paul's words to the church in Rome, that the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. What'd you think? That was good. She looks familiar. I don't know why. <laughs> she does kind of look familiar. Yeah. And I don't know why either. I um I don't believe that I've met her in my various travels around the church, but yeah, she does look familiar. So um before we continue with the PowerPoint, I'm curious, was there anything in particular that she said that really struck you? Um, the last part, when she was talking about prayer being a channel of God's love and power into the world. Yeah. That. Yeah. 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 That's striking. It, the, the part that struck me the first time I heard it, I've heard this a couple of times. And the part that really struck me is, you know, when she's talking about Adam and Eve mm -hmm. and God walking in the garden and calling out and how. Prayer isn't necessarily initiated by us. It's but yeah. God moves us to speak with God. Mm -hmm. and, um, the shame that we feel at having been called out to and by God uh, yeah. is so, oh, I got that. I, I really, <laughs> really get that. Uh, <laughs> But just that idea that God has always wanted to be in conversation with us. Yeah. And um, and so I think that I now see those those sort of moments in the morning that we talked about a minute ago. Mm -hmm. where I want coffee and I'm feeling like, oh, I should pray. And maybe that's God's way of saying, where are you? That could I, be. Yeah. I want to talk to you. And yeah. Um, so I just, I find that interesting. I really do. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Um, if you've admired people who, who are more consistent with their prayer, who, you know, make it a point that when they wake up in the morning, they pray before they go to sleep, they pray. And, you know, all the other times in between. And I feel very inadequate a lot of times because I know I'm just not making that measure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, yeah, I get that. And um, I I find sometimes that when I'm praying, I have sort of a vision in my head of, of uh, either what I think I ought to be praying for or whatever. But the honest truth of the matter, Pat, is that sometimes I'll say, Lord, you know, I'm really concerned about, oh, look at that. Wow. <laughs> Where was I? A squirrel moment. <laughs> You know, and and then I come back to it an hour later, like, oh, sorry, <laughs> ah, you know, um, and 
I, I think we're all like that a little bit. I also am so envious, especially if those people get up at, you know, five in the morning and they're reading the book of Psalms and I want to be that person. Boy, oh I want to be. We had, we had a lady that lived across the street from us when we were growing up and I don't remember how she and I ended up in the conversation. I probably was in high school, but I said some, she said something about um, getting the prayer card from somebody's funeral. And, and I said, Oh, well, that's really nice. She said, I have a stack that I keep next to my bed and I read every one of them every night before I go to sleep to pray for those people. <laughs> it's like, Wow. <laughs> you know, I um I keep a, a to-do list on my calendar or on my computer. And I also, as part of that to-do list, have a prayer list. And it's just a list of people and names and mm -hmm. whatnot. And um I in certain cases, you know, they've been on there for a long time. And people have said, you know, can you pray for my my grandson Andrew? And you know, I may not even know what is going on with it i and i'll have a note you know andrew debbie's grandson and right just but you know what is nice about that is then when i see debbie i can say hey how's your grand grandson yes you asked me a little grandma. reminder yeah grandma. so um and it's a good way also of reminding myself that every one of us needs prayer and all the people in our world have something going on we may not know mm -hmm is but there's something That's uh, great. so well let's let's go back to some questions here <laughs> you didn't say there was going to be a test virginia <laughs> i didn't there, it's not a test okay. <laughs> okay so um to the to my point about you know getting distracted by the squirrel or whatever uh, do you find sometimes that there are thoughts or questions that get in the way of your prayer oh definitely yeah mm -hmm. i don't think we'd be human if there wasn't <laughs> yeah i get that um <laughs> yeah i we get sidetracked you you know you think of something about that person or you're praying for a person and then you think something else about that person and you kind of go off on a tangent yeah yep yep um i that's why i like having the book of common prayer because mm -hmm. it grounds me and even those prayers that we've got memorized because we just say them over and over and over again what i enjoy about that is i can kind of let go and just let you right. know, my heart say the prayer and there's there's something about that about being grounded in it um and you know just just saying it even if i'm my head is somewhere else the prayer right. is still being said yeah um I also like that if I don't have anything to say at least I've got that those prayers mm -hmm. definitely um, yeah and I find that prayer can often be very much tied to mood right if you're really excited prayer is just <laughs> and if you're really depressed it's like all i could think about is this one thing i'm praying on and i know right. i should be praying about all this other stuff but i just you know i'm really focused right. on <laughs> are there particular things particular types of thoughts that uh get in the way of your praying <laughs> or distractions yeah probably my to-do list for the next day <laughs> I get that. I definitely get that. And and we're all get curious, you know, I'll think, well, why'd they word that that way? You know, <laughs> what, what exactly does does it this particular thing mean? Mm -hmm. um, so I'll I'll get and distracted by my curiosity sometimes, you know. <laughs> my cat. Um, I I have come to understand that I pray with my cat in the morning. And I, I didn't know this till I have a spiritual director, like a lot of clergy do. And I was explaining that every morning my cat, while the coffee's brewing, requires me to sit down on the floor and pet her. And if I don't, I hear about it all day. Yeah. And something about just that quieting and the waiting for the coffee and the sort of being in that moment with her demanding my attention 
is prayerful. It 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 grounds my day. Um, but I don't know that it is anything other than me being in contact with God's creation. Well, I was just gonna I was as soon as you started talking about that, I was thinking, you know, that you talked about, you know, God going, Hello, where are you? He's using the cat for you. <laughs> that's it. That's it. You know, I know you know Father Tom Gramley. Oh yeah. Yeah, Father Tom walks extensively. I think he walks, I think it's six miles a day. Wow. Um, but it it takes him a couple of hours to do. Sure. And he's a day, day after day after day, regardless of weather or temperature. And I've come to understand that for him, that is prayer. Oh, definitely. I can see that. Yeah. yeah. All right. Next question. How can you tell when you're in communion with God? Mm. I I can't always. <laughs> I mean, you know, there probably there are times when he just doesn't want to acknowledge me because, you know, I'm ticked off about something and I'm not being very kind, but <laughs> <laughs> that happens to all of us. <laughs> but you know, um, when when I when I do feel like I am, it, it's just it's that sense of peace and calm that yeah that comes in. Yeah. I think for me, yeah, yeah. Saint Julian of Norwich said, "All shall be well, and all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well." Mm -hmm. And there's truth to that, isn't there? The yeah. sense that. Um, this moment matters, but it's not the only moment and that God is with us and God has been with us and will be with us. Um, those are very comforting thoughts. Um, and, mm -hmm. and for me too, there's, there is a sense of, um, confidence perhaps, you know, all the anxiety kind of falls away. Um, I, you know, um, am I doing it right? Am I remembering everything I need to remember? Uh, what am I going to do for lunch? You know, all of that <laughs> kind of falls away. Yeah. Um, and there's also a sense of fit, you know, like puzzle pieces coming together. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That sounds rude. Yeah. Um, have you ever experienced, uh, either a baby or a dog when they get really comfortable and then there's this kind of a oh yeah uh, <laughs> definitely and and what, especially when babies do that I think what do you have to sigh about <laughs> <laughs> um but you know just this sort of everything is right yeah all it's that letting go yeah letting go exactly all right mm -hmm. um what is the distinction, if there is one, between prayer and actions, oh, between prayer and actions or words or ideas motivated by faith? Hmm. What's the distinction between prayer and actions, words, and ideas motivated by faith? But to me, I, I don't. I don't think there are any. Okay. Um, go back to my late husband. You know, he was he was one that was very strong belief in the fact that you know everything you do all day long. You know, if you're when you're sweeping the floor or washing the dishes or whatever you're doing, you can make it a prayerful time. Yes. So you know. If and if that works, then you know there isn't any difference between that between prayer. That is all prayer. Yeah. Yeah. Anything that we do that puts us in the mind, in it, you know, makes us mindful of God. Mm -hmm. Um, I think there are actions, words, and ideas that can be motivated by faith, but really driven by um 
what we think we ought to be doing. You know, I think about Martha and Mary. <laughs> Martha was so busy because she thought that's what she had to do. And Jesus said to her, but Mary has taken the better part by sitting and listening. And I wonder at times, how often am I, do I martyr myself in order to be a Mary, a Martha rather? Do uh, I, you know, just busy? I can do that. I can do that. No problem. <laughs> right. Busy, 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 because the stuff has to get done. And, you know, and then mm -hmm. I think, is is God calling me right now to just be quiet? Yeah. And, and that's okay, I think. Oh, definitely. Yeah. 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 It was, I have a chat yesterday. I was chatting with this woman who was explaining to me that she's now an empty nester for the first time in her life, uh, <laughs> living on her own. Her four kids are out of the house. She's widowed. And she said that her kids will call her and say, can I come over and can I come and be at the house? And, you know, can I, can I come over? And she started to say, no. <laughs> <laughs> No, I just, I work all day. I want to go home and I want to just be quiet. <laughs> and she yep. said she used to feel guilty about that. And now I think to myself, wait, if God is calling us into that quiet, we can keep ourselves so busy with things we think God wants us to do, but mm -hmm. maybe what God wants us to do is come out and be seen by him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So here's a prayer. Um, this was written by John Taylor, who was the Bishop of Winchester. And um, see, see what you think as I pray it. Lord Jesus Christ, live and at large in the world, help me to follow and find you there today. In the places where I work, meet people, spend money, and make plans. Take me as a disciple of your kingdom to see through your eyes and hear the questions you are asking to welcome all people with you, with your trust and trust, and to change the things that contradict God's love by the power of the cross and the freedom of the spirit. Amen. That's good. I, it reminds me, Tom Gramley was here in Walsall last week, and he was talking about um, us being the eyes and hands and feet of God um, in the world. And I know I'm not great at that, and it kind of scares me to think I am that. <laughs> But that's, this reminds me about that, it, you know, find you there today in the places where I work and meet people and spend money and, you know, it's. And make plans. Yeah. 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 It's, I, um, knowing that we are God's hands and feet in the world, especially lately, you know, maybe the last mm. couple months. I have found myself wanting to be overly, not overly, but perhaps more kind to strangers than I might mm -hmm. have been before. You know, the the checkout person at the grocery store, or um, the 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 barista at the coffee shop, um, or even just um, you know a person who's getting their their shopping cart. Uh, before me, I want to. I want to be <laughs> kind. I want to meet their eyes and smile and um, imply somehow in my behavior welcome, yes. and 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 that I see them and I like that I see them, and I feel God calling me to that uh, because our world is so hurt right now. Oh, definitely, and um, so. Now, my husband would say, oh, you're just a screaming extrovert, but I don't know. I, I just, I find myself wanting to just, even if it's a kind word or a smile or whatever it might mm -hmm. be, I find myself wanting to do that. I get it. 
And so that this line in this prayer about the places where I spend money, I don't tend to think of those as prayerful places. No, I wouldn't either. Not usually. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> did I include here? I did not include here. So I will end our show here. Uh, mm -hmm. That there's a, a statement um, and, and she might have said it in her video, a statement about Brother Lawrence saying that everything is prayer. I think she mentioned, I don't know if she said Brother Lawrence, was, but yeah, she did talk about that. About how, um, you know, in, in everything that you do, whether you're baking bread or yes. uh, making the bed, you're, you are at prayer. And right. um, that is a, a really interesting, interesting idea. Um, I think in some ways our minds are always a, active and thinking and busy even mm -hmm. if we're speaking <laughs> so <laughs> maybe um maybe our task as persons of prayer is to listen more and let whatever's in our hearts know that mm -hmm. let ourselves know okay somewhere god's in that somewhere i watch a young man on a podcast and he one of his New New Year's resolutions was that he wanted to become better at letting people finish what they were saying before he tried to respond or cut them off or even just start thinking about what he wanted to say before they finished. <laughs> and I thought, yeah, I that's good practice. I need to work on that a little. <laughs> well, I think we all do. You know, it's so easy to because what people say gets us thinking and we want to respond to it, especially if we're excited. Yes. Um, <laughs> and uh, it, yeah. And sometimes you just have to listen <laughs> for what they're really trying to say. And um, uh, it can be hard. <laughs> I agree with and you. It's very hard. Sometimes that still small voice is just a little too soft. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you have a favorite prayer or a favorite psalm or a piece of the scriptures or a, something from the prayer book that is especially beloved to you? Um, not, not really anyone in particular. I, I love that. I have the forward day by day app on my phone and yeah. I, I use that a lot because it has the, it has the, um, devotions you can do during the day it has all of the every day's readings and I like going in and like if it's a saint's day I like reading this story that they put the information out there about that saint's day who the saint was and you know and why they're being recognized on that day and everything so I'd say it's more in that line that I like having that availability and I can just grab it when I need to and yeah yeah, it is a wonderful app, isn't it? It is. It's got, it's got all the daily office. It's mm -hmm. got, um, uh, you know, the the forward day by day. It's got all sorts of wonderful. Yeah, and apps. it's like having the prayer book in your hand because it's got those. I love the daily devotions. I mean, not anyone in particular, but having the morning, the noon, the afternoon, and then the Compline. Uh, it's, you got, you got anything you need, anytime you need. That's right. And there's an online book of common prayer too. Yeah. I, plus I have a copy of my Kindle. So <laughs> yeah, there you go. So it it feels a little weird when I go in a patient's room in a hospital and <laughs> don't pull out a prayer book. And I think, oh, they think I'm just a slacker, you know, but I've got it all there on my phone. Right. So yeah. It, it's very convenient. <clears throat> well, one of my favorites, and this is going all the way back to seminary, uh, is a it's a collect that is for the presence of Christ um, and it's it's prayed during evening prayer and I'll be honest with you the reason that I like it is because of the alliteration mm -hmm. it goes like this keep watch dear Lord with those who work or watch or weep this night mm -hmm. and give your angels charge over those who sleep tend the sick Lord Christ give rest to the weary bless the dying soothe the suffering, 
pity the afflicted, shield the joyous, and all for your love's sake. Amen. Amen. I love the whole worker watcher weep piece, but I yeah. also love the idea of shielding the joyous. That just, yes. you know, that's a, a good reminder. Good reminder. If I've had a bad day, it's a good reminder to know, oh, somebody is having a good day. Yes. And they need to be shielded from all of my negativity. <laughs> <laughs> Which I make it sound, I realize as we're talking, I make it sound like I'm always having bad days. I don't. I, oh, I don't think you do. 99% <laughs> of the time, it's a great day. But, uh, you know, sometimes by the end of the day, I just sort of feel like, okay. <laughs> we, we can all do that. And, and people... In your position, sometimes I think I'm amazed you don't have more of those when you have to put yourself out there so much for other people that, you know, it's like absorbing all of their stuff. It, it's got to be hard. Well, I, I appreciate that. I think what, um, what a lot of folks don't get about being a clergy person and what has been a wonderful surprise for me to to observe is that all moments are moments of grace and all moments have opportunities for reconciliation and healing and that sounds a little hokey but I am so honored to do the work I do and um I am so amazingly overwhelmed whenever I am with someone who is deeply in need of of prayer and support and um i just feel like i have the best job in the world <laughs> that's great uh, uh, and i i am so grateful to do it now there are moments there are moments <laughs> you know when i i'm, I'm sure think, oh jesus i'm glad you love them even when i don't you know <laughs> <laughs> but for the most part it's um every there's far more joy than there is difficulty it's good and that is a wonderful thing yeah yeah very good well i think we pretty much covered the waterfront don't you i think we did well i think we did well too i'm glad we yeah. i'm glad we went ahead of it when even though nobody else was there <laughs> i think so too and i hope that uh folks who were who watch this if anybody watches this come and join us next week well, I know Polly wanted to come, but she had a couple of appointments today and she really wasn't feeling well. Her MS is, mm -hmm. is really giving her a hard time. And with the weather change, you know, going from being so warm to the cold and the it, that really that really affects her badly. So, you know, I know I'll make sure she has a, the link so that she can she can look at the recording because she'll she'll appreciate that. Okay. Great. Well, Pat, thank you. How did you get the tail done on the chicken? The tail is done. I'm gonna pick up stitches and add to uh, gonna pick up stitches across here and start doing the body. Excellent. Well, <laughs> when it's done, will you take a picture? I'd love to see. Oh, it. absolutely. Yes. <laughs> right. I love it. Okay. Well, listen prayers for you and with you. May thank God you. bless you. And thank you, Lord, for our time together. And I'll see you next week. Definitely. And please keep my sister in your prayers because she's going to be having knee replacement surgery on March 19th. March 19th. I will mm -hmm. absolutely keep her in. She's high house. anxiety right now. <laughs> Is she? Oh, yeah. Okay. She has anxiety issues anyway, but this okay. is just putting her up over the top <laughs> yeah sure okay um so you said knee right yes which knee left okay um terrific i'm gonna be down in that neck of the woods on saturday the 9th would it be helpful if i drop by and said a little prayer um she work Saturdays oh she she does um we have a heart comfort house here in town yeah and she she does work up there in fact that's where she is tonight she's up there working 
So, oh, okay. yeah. So that would probably not work for her. Okay. <laughs> but if you keep her on her on your list. I, I will. She and will appreciate that. We have a dinner on the ninth over at St. Paul's and Angelica. It's really for families with little ones so mm -hmm. we can do some an, a little uh education program with the little ones oh but nice if you all want to come over i'm cooking and there will be plenty so <laughs> okay i don't know what i'm making yet but i'm gonna make about a ton of it so okay <laughs> it's always a good thing yeah i think i think we're eating at six okay so. i'll keep that in mind keep it in mind all Fair. right wonderful well thank you have a wonderful night Thank you, you too, and we'll see you next week. Okay, take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.